Hey guys, uh, Tom from Brisbane Coast Guard. We are joined with Daniel Moyle, Sergeant at Brisbane Water Police today. You've uh, kindly come down this afternoon to uh, lend us a hand to chat about EPIRBs. So if, uh, for those of you that don't know, EPIRBs are a location device and we've got a few examples here today. So before we do that, we we'll, uh, might just chat about a search and rescue we did yesterday. So Coast Guard VMR and Water Police constantly work together for all search and rescue operations in the bay. Um, we use all the assets at our disposal to go out and basically look for people when they're in their dire situations. So yesterday was a small example of that. It was a really good outcome, uh, but it could have been a lot worse uh, if things had gotten worse. So Dan, what happened yesterday? Well, there was a kayaker that sunk uh, and a person ended up in the water and as a result for 45 minutes um, this person was in the water and luckily was rescued by the Coast Guard. Um, he didn't have a life jacket so it was very hard to see um, him and it was only that he had a light that he was observed. But he didn't have an EPIRB, he didn't have uh, any other safety equipment on board. So we've got four examples here today guys, we'll uh, run through them and then we'll break them down individually and why you'd want one when you're required to carry one. Um, so we might start with the big guy, hey Dan? Yeah. So this guy here, what is it? It's a float away, float free EPIRB, they're a new uh, concept, obviously there's been a large number of incidents out on the bay and some vessels you can't get to EPIRBs quickly. So for your larger vessels, the float free EPIRB is excellent because if something happens quickly and you're trying to deal with that incident, if for some reason you need to get an uh, abandoned ship, this will automatically float free and activate, um, obviously then getting help uh, heading your way without any interaction or um, help from yourself. Yep. Okay, and so it's designed to float free of the vessel uh, once it um, once the vessel sinks or it becomes disabled. Perfect. So the guy on the end there is probably what most people are used to seeing. And this is this is a, a vessel vessel EPIRB, that's what everyone sees. Basically the idea of this is to put on your vessel, it comes away quickly with a quick release, you activate it when you're in the water. You can also test it uh, to make sure it's still working. Um, as you can see, we can check that it's working and doing what it needs to do. They have expiry dates on them, it's important that we keep an eye on those because expiry dates are for the battery life. The, the, the device is designed to um, work for a certain period of time to allow rescue assets to get to you and if that battery life is deteriorated because it's out of life then uh, that can obviously reduce the chances of uh, survival out there. So these need to be registered with AMSA as well? Certainly do, you can get on the MSQ or sorry the AMSA website and once you're on that website um, you register your EPIRB and then you change your details every two years and you can set reminders and stuff so it's quite easy. Yeah, yeah, generally the most people just throw a reminder in the calendar. Yeah, that's phone. right and then it uh, comes around and then you just update your details and it also gives us extra contact details so if it is you in trouble and you've activated it, we can get hold of your next of kin uh, to make sure that you are actually the person on the boat and who else is on the boat with you so we can send the appropriate assets to that location. Yeah, we might leave a link above to the AMSA website where you can register it and keep your details up to date. So the next two guys we got here are PLBs, uh, they're quite different styles. The one on the uh, my right here is a Coast Guard one. We've had it for quite some time. It actually expires next year. And then uh, the one that Dan's holding on his on his left is a newer one. So you can see quite the difference in their size change. And, and these are quite good. These are really, really good for um, if you're not in a big vessel, you're in a kayak or a uh, sail driven vessel that doesn't have anything else, fishing, anything, any, any type of watercraft that you want to make sure you're safe, um, that doesn't require one, but you want one for your safety and your peace of mind for your family, then this is an ideal choice. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, it still does exactly the same thing as this, but this is designed for vessels. This is designed to sit comfortably in a, in a life jacket or in your pocket even, and if something goes wrong, you can activate it and help will come as quickly as possible. We actually did a job about a month ago. Um, this guy, he fishes by himself offshore, and he basically almost cut his whole finger off. Oh, wow. But he also had, because he fishes by himself, he had one of those on his life jacket and the big guy on the boat. Um, and he activated both and because he did that we were able to get to him pretty quick and help him I out. remember that job, yeah. I was actually the coordinator of that and AMSA was tracking that, them coming in and I was communicating with the Canberra in relation to that job yeah. and we had the helicopter actually uh, proceeding that way if uh, he, you guys didn't get to him so there was a doctor and everyone on the way and just in case he blacked out from that injury he had the EPIRB activated, he was in the vessel by himself yeah. so if he had a blacked out or, or an, uh, come unstuck from some other reason, then we were still going to find him and hopefully provide the emergency care that he needed to get him home safely. Yeah, cool. 
So Dan, um, when are you required to carry any perv in Queensland? So requirements are depending on the vessel registration, any registered vessel, two nautical miles for any fixed land. Okay, okay. and there's plenty of charts and maps on the MSQ website which show you exactly where you need them and you must yeah it's generally any vessel that goes outside that however in saying that there's a lot of areas that don't have phone reception with inside that two nautical miles and even uh, here around Morton Island there are some areas where you don't have phone reception and if you can't call for help no help can come so an EPIRB is recommended at any time you're on the water um, if you can carry it and you can afford to buy one, then I would recommend every person uh, out using the water for in any circumstances, in a kayak, a little vessel, a Hobie cat, um, a paddle steamer, I don't care, uh, an EPIRB will get you get your help as quickly as possible um, without having to um, talk on phones where there's confusion and all that sort of stuff. An EPIRB says, here I am and I'm in trouble. Most of the options, uh, bar this big guy on the table, have all got 10 year battery lives when you buy them. Yep. So it's not it's not a huge investment and you get such a long life out of them, you're not replacing them, not like flares where you're doing them every two to three years. Three years yeah. um, they do last a lot longer. Uh, and they're, they're like, what's the value of a life? Uh, for mine, if my family are going out in the water, I will buy one of these. Um, and I, um, fortunately I get to um, work in the water police where I'm on the water all the time but we get to see the good and bad on the water so to make sure that we've done everything we can to find you you that, you've got to look after your family that's I suppose the the big key if it's my family out there they'll have an e with them um, and even if I'm out there I've been in the water police for some time now um, even if I'm out there I'll still make sure I've got one because I know that if something goes wrong that I can call for help as quickly as possible without having to try and use my phone that's wet um, and radios that's sinking, battery doesn't work, all those things can go wrong. These things are a simple activation, activate it and help will come. The well guys, generally when we're running a search, um, we're looking for pretty much this much sticking out of the water. Yeah. If you've got one of these guys on you, it helps narrow it down significantly. Instead of looking through the whole day, we're uh, narrowing it down to a very, very small distance. So, um, just, thanks for that, yeah. Just in addition to that, there are different models you can get. There's um, the normal models and there's GPS fitted ones. The majority of ones are GPS fitted. The GPS fitted ones send a, a signal to the satellite, but they also provide their GPS position. But the other ones just send a satellite signal. Um, it's a lot more accurate if you get the GPS one, so we can find you quicker. Um, and all of these EPIRBs have a one to one frequency that activates, which allows our helicopters to track into these beacons as well. So there are two different types. I would always recommend the GPS one because it, it sends the actual GPS position of the device, not trying to find the signal. So it'll give it a lot more accuracy and we can find you quicker. And that's what it's about. If you're in the water uh, bobbing around, the, the, the quicker you can get out of the water in the safety of either the Coast Guard, a volunteer marine rescue or a helicopter, or the water police, then we, that's what we want. Yeah, and really there's only a few dollars difference between the GPS oh, and non-GPS. That's, that's, that's exactly right. As yeah. you said, they've got a 10 year battery life. Over the 10 years, it might be extra $5 or something. Yeah. Like it's, no, it's, it's, it's yeah, circumstantial when you look at it. So thanks for coming down, Dan, and uh, going through the options with us. They are a pretty good option, and like they're, they're relatively cheap considering you get 10 years out of them. Um, if you guys have any information or want any information on EPIRBs, I highly recommend you check out the MSQ website. We'll leave a link above. It's full of information and frequently asked questions. It is the go-to source. Alternatively, you can come down and talk to your Coast Guard, your volunteer marine units. We can only provide limited information. The MSQ website is the holy grail of what's, what's on offer. Um, and if you see the Brisbane Water Police out and about, give them a wave. They're a friendly bunch of guys and uh, we're all here just to make sure everyone's safe out in the water. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.